Who are Generation Z? It's a term to describe those born after 1995. They're environmentally aware, they care about how and where products are made, they're entrepreneurial, and they want to make a positive impact in the world. They're our GDST girls. And what's exciting is that these digital natives now have the tools to start to solve real-world problems, which is why we see stories such as a 16-year-old who created biodegradable single-use shampoo and soap to eliminate the mini plastic bottles from hotel rooms. Or two architecture students who designed Luminate, a lightweight, waterproof lighting solution to aid with disaster relief efforts around the world. Or a Canadian student who created the Lucky Iron Fish to combat iron deficiency in remote Cambodian villages. And what these stories illustrate is not only the remarkable ability for young people to make positive change in the world, but a focus on designing solutions to authentic problems by listening to what the real needs are of those involved. Arguably, they all follow a design thinking process, a process originally used by designers, but has spread to other industries as a way to tackle complex problems. And whilst there are various frameworks out there, there tend to be five key stages of this process. First, to empathize, then define the problem at hand, then to idea or brainstorm possible solutions before creating a prototype of a solution and constantly testing solutions with the end user. Now, this approach encourages divergent thinking to explore possibilities, as well as convergent thinking to narrow down ideas and decide what to do. And these types of thinking are repeated throughout the process. So that's design thinking. And what we did at the SLT conference is participate in a design thinking sprint to experience the approach firsthand. So we looked at how might we redesign the sitting experience? So after partnering up, we shared our experience with sitting. We defined what we call the problem statement by using a very simple fill in the blank template. Next, we drew radical ideas to solve the user problem. And we're pushed to think differently about the problem with concepts like Magic Castle Hotel and their Popsicle Hotline. Next, we created physical prototypes to represent our abstract ideas, and we used recycled materials to do this. And let me say there was an absolute explosion of, shall we say, unique ideas to solve the problem of some very exhausted educators. Now, why is creating a prototype out of some pipe cleaners and plant pots important? Well, of course, it's not about the prototype itself, but the thinking behind what it is. So it's how design thinking encourages creative thinking and risk taking and experimentation. It's a focus on the process, not the product. And whilst we looked at redesigning the sitting experience in this particular instance, this framework can be applied to solve problems in the classroom, school, community and more. The key is to focus on understanding and framing the problem. And then the ideating, prototyping, and testing phases are more cyclical than linear and give lots of opportunities for students to fail often and fail fast, encouraging what we call the freedom to fail. And this is important when we talk about how to combat perfectionism in our school and with our girls. As Andy Buck noted at the conference, perfection is the enemy of progress. Success is not linear. It's messy. Learning is messy. And we have the opportunity in our school to provide spaces for girls to experiment and fail and learn from their mistakes. It's an approach that has been brought in at Brighton Girls to work out how we can apply design thinking as a separate subject block, as off timetable days, and most importantly, by tweaking existing curriculum and schemes of work to have and encourage this type of mindset with the girls. Because big companies are already reaching out to us as experts in girls' education to ask, how are we inspiring the next generation of entrepreneurs? How are we getting more girls interested in STEM? And I don't think the answer is teaching these things directly, but rather giving opportunities across subject areas to establish the mindsets required to adapt and innovate, to find authentic problems for our girls to solve driven by their passions. So that's Generation Z, and that's one way we can adapt our schools to inspire and support them to be the next generation of leaders.